Timothy, uh, chapter number 2, and uh, the Lord laid this on my heart a uh, month or so ago, and uh, I hope I can do justice, uh, but uh, if you want to follow along with me, we're going to begin at verse number 1, and read a few verses. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus, or in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. If a man strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Uh, and I, my thought today is from verse number 3 that says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And uh, before I get into scripture, there's one thing I want to mention I forgot. I was listening to Brother Ernie and Sister Barb's first song a while ago, and there was one portion of that that, that really caught me and touched me is, He made a change in me. Amen. And I'm glad that Jesus made a change. When Jesus makes a change in us, when God makes a change in us, the change will last forever. Uh, and it's up to us. But I, I want to talk today about being a good soldier. And uh, there was a song we used to sing way back many years ago when I was a kid uh, about uh, I'm a soldier in the service of the Lord or something like that. I'm a soldier. And uh, I never thought much about it back then, but through the years I have thought about it. We're soldiers for the Lord. We're soldiers in serving God. We're fighting a battle today. We're in a battle today. I've been saved for almost 60 years. And we're fighting a battle today that I've never seen fought before. We're fighting forces today that I've never seen before or I've never felt before. We're fighting the forces of hell. And you know, we might as well own up to it. We might as well acknowledge it and make sure that we're armed to, do, to fight the warfare that's been set before us. God trusts you and I today. Amen. He's entrusted in you and I to be a witness and to be a light and to hold up the bloodstained banner. Amen. He's entrusted you and I in these last days that we're living in. I, I, I thought many times for the day of the Lord, I'd just like to get out of here. But I recently thought, Lord, you know, you're, you're trusting in us. Yeah. He's trusting us to do the thing that He needs to be done in this world today. Amen. I know God can do it. He can do it all by Himself. I realized many years ago that God don't need me. Amen. I need Him, but He don't need me. He can do well without me. He got along pretty good before He saved and he could get along just as well without me. But I need him. Amen. And we need to realize who we are today. We're children of God. Amen. We're blood bought. We're born again. Servants of the Most High God. I'm a servant. Remember the servant or the man that came to Jesus one time? He was a ruler of the Jews. And he had a servant at home that was sick. And he came and he wasn't worthy. He didn't feel like he was worthy to bring the man to Jesus. But he came himself and said, Lord, if you just speak the word only, I know that my servant will be healed. Or we get an echo. Or is it just me? Is it echo? Uh, but this man said, I'm a man of authority. And I realize I understand authority. But in a man in being authority, he said, I've had people over me. But he also said, I have people under me. My servant is under me. But he had enough compassion for that servant to come to Jesus 
And he comes and he humbles himself before the Lord and he becomes a servant uh, to the man that he's a servant. That is his servant. He became a servant to him. I've called a few of our politicians in Washington recently and I've tried to remind them that they are servants of the other people. They're not what they think they are. They're supposed to be servants of the people. Amen. Brother Danny is a servant of this church. Amen. I don't know him very well, but I'll guarantee you that he don't think he's above you all no. because he's a servant to you. I served for many years as a pastor. I was a servant. I tried to be a good servant. The church, we're servants of the Most High God of what we need to understand today. That there's authority over us today that this world cannot contain. This world cannot do anything with. They cannot control the authority that's over you and I today. And Paul says here, we need to endure hardness as a good soldier. We're in a time in our life, we're in a place in a nation today that we need to understand that we need to endure hardness. We're going through some things. God's going to take us through those things as long as we trust Him. I've been thinking about something recently and I, my thoughts, uh, and I've said it before a few times, but I, understand, I think I, I need to understand it more today than ever before. And my thought is, and I think about it sometimes, Lord, if I could just have faith like I had the night that I got saved. Amen. If I could just trust you Amen. the way I trusted you the night that I got saved. Amen. When the man told me, just raise your hand and say yes to Jesus. And I did. And my life changed. Amen. He forgave me. He took out an old stony heart of heart an old black heart and put in a heart that would serve God. Amen. I don't know how he did it, but I know he did it. Amen. But if I could just have that faith again, if I could just have that faith when I pray and seek God and ask God to touch people, ask God to save people, if I could just have that same faith, Amen. how much more God would do. Amen. How much more I could see God. The Apostle Paul wrote in Corinthians. Uh, and uh, he said in the uh, 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote this. And he said, For our weapons are not war, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God Amen. to the pulling down strongholds. Talking about being a soldier. I was never in the service. I've had some brothers that were in. Known a lot of people that served in our armed forces. And they had to go for a basic training. Six weeks, I believe it used to 
wasn't confused when he said, let dry land appear and dry land appear. He wasn't confused when he said, let the sea be full of fish. God wasn't confused. You'll never show me in the Bible where God was ever confused. Amen, brother. He wasn't confused when he told the children of Israel to leave Egypt and to go to Canaan land. God wasn't confused on what he wanted them to do. The children of Israel got confused. The children of Israel lost faith. The children of Israel looked around them at the circumstances that they were in. The circumstances that you're in today does not change God. It does not change the plan of God for your life. You might have came up against the stumbling block. You might have came up against the brick wall. But it did not change the plan of God. Amen, Amen. When they got to the Red Sea, God's plan didn't change. They said, well, look, there's a red sea. There's no way we can do it. Moses said, stand still. Just wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait a minute. All you and I have to do, church, just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Several years ago, God spoke to me and said, give me time and give me space. And I learned a great lesson. My time is not his time. Amen. My way is not His way. My will is not His will. I have to submit to His will. Amen. I have to submit to His time. Amen. I have to submit to what He wants to do. I have to submit to where, where He wants to do it at. But the children of Israel were standing there. Both of said, stand still and see the salvation of God. Amen. All at once the wind began to blow. When the water began to roll back, the wind began to blow. That night they went across from the dry land. The Red Sea didn't disrupt God's plan. What disrupted God's plan was when the children of Israel got over on their way to Canaan land, that they rebelled, disobeyed God wouldn't listen to Moses any longer. When we don't listen to our pastors, when we don't listen to our leaders, we get to trouble. Yeah. I had a nephew and his wife came to me one time many years ago. I had performed a marriage for them. And they had a place in their life where we were going to get a divorce. They were blessed. They weren't in church even when I was there. But God had blessed me. And uh, I was surprised when I got a call. And they wanted to come and talk to me. I didn't want to do it, Brother Danny, because it was my nephew. And I thought, she's going to think that I'm taking up for him. She's going to expect me to take his side. They came. We sat down at my kitchen table. We began to talk. And uh, he was as wrong as she was. He made mistakes as well as she did. And I tried to point out his mistakes as well as her. We had prayer that night. They went home. And they lived together since that time, but recently they've divorced. They didn't call me this time. And say, we need to talk to you again. But they decided to just get a divorce. But all those years, Probably 10 years ago, that they lived together with happiness. Raised her family. God bless them. But then all of a sudden, they trusted in themselves instead of trusting God. Instead of letting the Lord live. The way the children of Israel did. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. God. He forgave them, had mercy on them, he spared them. Over and over again. I thought, I thought many times, Brother Danny, how many times? How many times did you have to forgive them? And then I think of myself, how many times? How many times? 
but it can't get to them. Does it amaze you of how that God fixed everything? Does it amaze you of how that God, when He created this world, He fixed everything? Church, He didn't leave anything out. He fixed every little detail. He made it perfect. The Bible said every day that He worked, God saw that it was good. And I think on the sixth day, He said it's very good. But God saw that it was good. This world has evolved, revolved, as long as God, since God made it to exist, it's revolved on its axis. It turns every day. It rotates in the right way. It's never stopped. It's never, well, it did stop two times. But the sun stood still once. And God made the degrees go back one time. But this world has turned. And it's still turned. It amazes me that once in a while the scientists say we found a new planet. No, you didn't. There's no new planets. What God created, what God flung in the, in the space, are still there. And they're the same ones that God put there when He put them there. This world will turn. This world will exist. This world will continue on. But God says that's enough. We don't have to worry. All the things that man's worried about today, the climate and all that, God's got it all under control. Amen, brother. It's all under control. God put enough oil under the ground. He put enough coal under the ground. He put enough gas under the ground to last as long as this world lasts. It's there. And if it, if it ever runs out, He can put more in. Amen. He created this body. You know God healed? He created this body. He knows what's wrong. I said one time I believe God's got a storehouse full of parts for these bodies of life. Something goes wrong, he can replace it. We just need to understand, church, who we are. We're children. Amen. We're children of God. I was born uh, in a very poor family, raised poor. Raised on a farm. We were poor. Uh, and I'm not ashamed of it. I was back then. But I realized it. But most of my life, I didn't realize it. Because everybody else was. But I'm sorry for the times that I felt ashamed. Because I had nothing to be ashamed of. We are what we are. God can change what we are and make us who He wants us to be. And that's the important thing. That we allow Him to make us what He wants us to be. Do you ever stop to think the children of Israel would have only trusted God? If they would have only been obedient to God, how much better this world would be? And I'm not minding. Our faults are our faults. If I don't make it to heaven, it's my fault. I can't blame somebody else. It's my fault. But my plan is how to The weapons of our warfare are not fine, but they're mighty through God. Amen. You notice that Paul said they're mighty through God. Not mighty to me, not mighty because of some preacher some person in this world, but they're mighty through God. When we trust Him, church, and we believe Him, when we let Him have His way in our own, when we do His will, let Him lead us and guide us in the way He wants us to go. I've learned in, in life that I've been amazed many times in situations I found myself in. Places I found myself in. My first, first thoughts would be, why is this happening? Why am I here? But when I would allow the Lord to speak to me, 
speak to my heart. I was going to find out the reason that the thing happened the way it happened. And I was in a situation I was in because it's where he wanted to be. And he will never fail. We'll never be able to point a finger at God and say, You failed. You lied. You misled me. It'll never happen. Because you'll never mislead him. You'll never take him where he can't keep you. Just remember. You got some weapons. You got some weapons. Power and prayer. I'm glad for Brother Nancy said earlier about coming around the altar and praying. That's where it's at, church. That's how we're going to defeat the enemy. Not by us. I told my wife the other day, I said, I'm going to run for school board. I'm going to run for school board down the hall. And uh, we thought, able. But I can do as much as pray as I could get my school. I can do as much as probably more on my knees. Pray. See you down. Prayer changes that story. Jesus said in St. John 14, 14, one of the first scriptures I learned. After I got saved, you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Philippians 4 and 13 was the first one that I really remember remembering. God called me to preach. I was reading my Bible one day, and I was in the back of the bachelor, and I said, Lord, I can do it. I usually say sometimes, Lord, you got me mixed up with somebody else. And that's what I'm I did. trying to convince him that day. But I found that scripture, Philippians 4 13. It says, For I can do all things through Christ, which is me. And I stood on that scripture over and over and over and over until it got into me. And I realized. Do whatever God lays on my heart. He couldn't do it, he wouldn't ask me to do it. He'll never ask you to do something that he knows you can't do. Maybe some things you don't want to do, but you can do it. Do it. We appreciate you this morning. Hope that you say something that's been a blessing to you. Just remember who you are. Hold your head. Nothing to hang your head down about. Jesus is coming. He's coming at night. I have no idea. Nobody knows except God the Father. But Jesus is coming. He's coming. Jesus said, You'll know that the night is the time of darkness. This world isn't ready for the coming of Jesus. The world is ready, but it's time. I believe for Jesus to come. Things are getting. Lift up your head. The Bible said, for your redemption draw. First, we've got a lot more to look to. Not in this life, but we've got a lot more to I'm, I'm looking forward to going home. I'm not back to Kentucky today is my daughter talk. I'm looking forward to going home. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all over there. And uh, appreciate Brother Danny today. I appreciate you all. Thank you.